God bless you. God bless you. Thank you for joining me once again today on uh, Kingdom Insight as we bring you the Word of God. Today, I want to show you the cure to anxiety, the cure to anxiety. There are so many things in our lives that happens that may bring anxiety and anxiety can affect your faith. And when your faith is affected, your hopes are dashed as well. Stay tuned as we look at uh, the cure for anxiety and how God will fight for you. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. Welcome to Kingdom Insight with Dr. Kazumba Charles. This program is designed to help you discover treasures and truth from God's Word and also give you deeper insights and understanding of the character and nature of God. Here is your host, Dr. Kazumba Charles. Uh, anxiety comes in different forms, and there are so many things that will cause you to go through anxiety. I want to read a scripture for you here. We're going to look into the book of Matthew, chapter 6, verse uh, 25, because uh, there we see D Jesus teaching something that is so powerful to help us uh, cure anxiety. Listen, you will face challenging moments in your life. Probably you are facing right now challenging moments right now, but I want you to stay put on this program because you will discover how to overcome those challenges and how not to let anxiety take over your life. Because when anxiety takes over your life, that's how you end up with a high blood pressure. And I want you to see from the scripture here how we can depend on God and stand on the word of God no matter what what is going on in our lives. No matter what is happening, Jesus begins to teach here in, uh, in, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 6 verse uh, 25. He says, uh, therefore, I tell you, do not worry about your life. Do not worry about your life. What is the greatest worry that we have? The greatest worry each and every one of us has is uh, about our life. Jesus says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. Don't worry about your life. He's not saying that your life is not important here. What Jesus is saying, don't be concerned or worry about your life. Why? Because there is somebody who is powerful who has your life if you've given your life to him. And if he has your life, there is nothing else you have to worry about because he is in control. Isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Consider now, he tells a story here about the birds. He says uh, in verse 26, Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worthy more than they? When we are so worried about the situation we're going through, not that we shouldn't look at the situation, but when we are so worried about the situation we are going through, what happens? We, it leads to depression. It leads to stress. It leads to high blood pressure. And that can affect your overall health. This, your, your, your mind, your, the way you think, it will be affected because uh, you are so worried about uh, so many things. Worry is a killer. Worry can kill your faith. Worries can kill your hope. Worries can kill your trust in God. Worries can wear you down. That's why God wants to heal you from the spirit of anxiety. Anxiety can lead you to many health complications. And God says, am I not a God who can provide for you? If I provide for the birds, how much more? more can I provide for you? In verse 7, he says here, uh, can any of you add a one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread. Yet I tell you, that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and throw, thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you little, you of little faith? So don't worry saying what we will eat or what we will drink, or what we will wear. For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that they need them. 
But you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. But I want to dissect into that scripture right there. Where Jesus first, he tells the disciple, you won't add a year to your life by living a life of worries. Here is the cure to our anxiety. Here is the cure to our panic attacks when things are not going well. The cure is uh, faith, having faith in Jesus Christ. When we have faith in Jesus Christ, we trust God to do the best for us and to change or turn our circumstances around and here Jesus says uh, the Gentiles seek things first because they are in a panic mode they don't know who they have let me give you let me say it this way let's say I have my kids and then uh, all of a sudden the lights in the house goes off the kids, they have assurance of protection in the darkness because they know daddy is around. They will actually run to daddy at that moment because that's where they know they are safe and secure. It is the same when you have the kingdom of God. Here, Jesus is telling them, only the Gentiles worry about food, worry about all these things. Why? Because they don't have anywhere else to run to, so they are going to worry about all these things. But you who are in my kingdom, but you who understand the kingdom of God, do not worry about what you eat. Do not worry about what you don't have. Seek the kingdom of God. Why? Because when you seek the kingdom of God, which is uh, the rule and reign of God, which is the power of God, the power of God to provide, the power of God to do the miraculous, or the power of God to make a way where there is no way, it will provide for you. All you need to do is have God. When you have God, you have everything. It sounds very simple, but I, I know it is very tough to just walk by faith. When we walk by faith, that's why the Bible says uh, we don't have to walk by sight because uh, your sight can mislead you, but faith can lead you to greater and powerful things. So Jesus was telling them here, you do not worry about anything. Don't be anxious for ever everything. Don't be anxious in any situation, but stand on the word of God. You seek the kingdom of God first. You pursue God first. When you pursue God, God will pursue things that you need for you. He will bring it into your life. So one thing we understand in Matthew chapter 6 uh, verse 25 is that uh, if God does greater things uh, for us, or if God really feeds the birds that, 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 that they don't even have the muscle to work or to labor, if God provides for them, how much more can he provide for you? If God created you, this means that if God created you, then it means that he is going to provide for you. If God gave you teeth to chew something, it means he will give you something to chew. He will give you food. He will provide for you. But we become so anxious when we don't see the provision of God and attain to other sources like witchcraft and, and the magic and the, these unclean powers that is out there so that we can get a miracle. Listen, those have got limitation. They have a limitation. Only God has the unlimited power to provide for you, to set you, to set you for the rest of your life and to provide in, in a miraculous way. So God here wants you to understand not to be anxious on in anything, but to have faith in Jesus Christ, to trust Jesus Christ here. If God created you, it means that he is certainly capable of feeding you. He is certainly capable of looking after you. He is ca certainly capable of bringing healing and deliverance to you. He is capable of protecting you from all the spirits uh, that has been pursuing you. 
Our greatest desire and your greatest desire should always be God. When you have God, let me tell you something. The Bible declares that if God is for us and if God is for you and with you and by you, who is it who can be against you? It can poverty be against you? Can sickness be against you? Absolutely not. Why? Because you have the greatest of all in your corner. Do you have Jesus in your corner? Do you have Jesus in your house? Do you have Jesus in your home? Do you have Jesus in your workplace? When you have Jesus Christ, you can be assured that you have the power above every power to fight for you and to watch over you. So here you need to understand our greatest desire should not be things. Our greatest desire should be God himself because where God is, trust me, God will provide the miraculous and powerfully in your life. We should never seek God based on what we want to get from Him, but we should always seek God based on who He is to us. When you have God, you have everything. I want you to understand that. When you have God, you have everything. When you have the Spirit of God, and when you have the greater I am in your life, you truly have everything that you need. Hallelujah. God is capable of turning your situations around. It doesn't matter the poverty that you come from. It doesn't matter what looks like dry season in your life. When you have God, He is capable of changing the situation, transforming your life. And uh, where you were a shame to others, you become a joy to be around. Listen to this here. When you have God, you have everything. The Bible encourages us to seek first the kingdom of God. There is a reason why you and me should seek the kingdom of God. There is a reason why we should seek the kingdom of God because when you have the kingdom of God operating in your life, the kingdom of darkness will have no power over your life. That means the kingdom that brings sickness, the kingdom that brings poverty, the kingdom that holds you back will have no power over you. Then when you have the kingdom of God, you have everything because the light of Jesus Christ will shine brighter anywhere and everywhere you go. This means that uh, uh, God will be sufficient for you, that God will be enough for you. And when God is enough, he will bring everything that you need according to his will for your life. Then the other powerful thing, why we should seek the kingdom of God first, or why we should be in the kingdom of God, is that when the kingdom of, when you are in the government of the kingdom of God, guess what happens? You have authority, you have power, you have confidence, you have assurance that God will do that which he has spoken he will do in your life. The kingdom of God is simply the rule and reign of God, the power of God. Let me tell you this here, you all uh, in your countries or in nations, uh, you have a government that rules in that country. Now understand this, an example, a good example is a police officer. If you're driving and a police officer stops you, that police officer is not stopping you based on his own authority. He is stopping you based on the authority and the power of the government that runs and rules in that country. That means when a police officer says stop, oh you, you'll be smart to just stop. Uh, you will be smart to just stop. Why? He carries the power of the government. It's the same now at a deeper level, having the kingdom of God, being in the kingdom of God, being born again, being born of the spirit of God, being in Christ is not just a small thing of going to heaven. It is actually a greater thing of understanding the rule and authority and the power of the kingdom of God, how it operates and how God wants to operate in and through you. So when you have the kingdom of God, you have the rule and reign of God. It means God will rule over your circumstances. God will reign over your problems. God will rule and reign over any situation you may run yourself into. 
That means that you don't have to worry. The government of the kingdom of God is on your side. The government of the kingdom of God is fighting for you. The government of the kingdom of God is standing by you so you don't have to worry. Now, let me tell you here what anxiety does in our lives. Anxiety is something we all go through. We understand that because we are worried about what we can eat, what we should eat, uh, worried about uh, God, I want uh, to come out of this situation. Listen, God is not moved by our fears. Jesus is not moved by our fear of what is going on in our lives. Jesus is not moved by circumstances that surround us. Jesus is moved by your faith. If you could put your faith in Jesus Christ and trust Jesus to overturn and override everything that is trying to crush you, everything that is trying to bombard you, you will see the salvation and the great salvation of God. A situation may arise in your life that may bring what? That may bring worries. Sickness sometimes or, or the doctor's report may bring worries. Or uh, maybe just you look in your bank account right now, you've got zero. It is only zero, zero. And you look like a God, I don't have anyone to tend to. But I want to tell you, if you are in the kingdom of God, and if you have the kingdom of God by your side, you don't have to look to the, re- to the left, you don't have to look to the right, you look up to the mountain where your strength comes from. Your strength comes from the power of the living God. It is God who changes the, the circumstances. So it could be a sickness or a lack of money that may make you be anxious. But tell that spirit of this world that dominates our lives, the need that dominates our lives to say, I am not going to panic. My father in heaven has my problem and he knows my situation and he's going to answer me. Listen to me here. When the spirit of anxiety overwhelms a person, their ability to trust God fades away. Their ability to have hope and to see God do wonders in their lives fades away. And their ability to understand that God has power to change their situation also fades away. Don't let anxiety take your faith away. Don't let anxiety for things you don't have move you, but you stand on the word of God that says what? That says, call unto me in times of trouble and I will answer thee and show you the greater and mighty things. That is what a faithful person does before God. Listen to this here. Anxiety is what causes many people to turn to other sources other than God. Anxiety is what causes many people to go and buy holy water so that they they can change their situation. Let me tell you something. No holy water, no holy oil, no prophet, no, no person has the power to transform your life other than Jesus Christ. I am here to encourage you. I am here to stand with you, but there are anointing of God to tell you that it is Jesus Christ who changes circumstances in our lives. It is Jesus Christ who brings a change in our lives. There is no power that can change your, your, your life. It is God who created you. And it is God who has a plan for you. Anxiety leads many people to go and uh, look to other sources, to go and consult a witch doctor. Listen to me. Those uh, miracles can never bring change to you. It is only the miracle worker himself, Jesus Christ, and his government of the kingdom operating in your life that brings a transformation and change in every circumstances. So don't let anxiety lead you to turn to other sources of power. Witchcraft cannot solve your problem. Spam leaders cannot solve your problem. All these other witch doctor like, uh, you know, um, people out there cannot solve your problem. Your problem can be solved by you turning to Jesus Christ. The Bible says, uh, return to me and I will return back to you. Again, it says, draw near to me and I'll draw near to you. Your key to having your miracle is by turning back to God. If you turn to God in prayer, if you turn to God in prayer, in humility, you will see God fight for you 
and work for you. I want to leave you with uh, Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 before we pray here. We're going to pray that God is going to, 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 to answer your prayers and God is going to shift your situation. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6, we read this. It says, uh, do not be anxious about anything. Hallelujah. Do not be anxious about anything. I love that because uh, that is a really powerful to understand that we are not to be anxious about anything. We are not to be anxious about uh, nothing here. It says that uh, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. Listen to this here. In every situation, do not be anxious. In any situation, do not worry. Don't let worries move you. Let faith move you. If faith moves you, then you're going to stand on the on. The Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 that says do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication go to God to pray in prayer God to God and tell God, you know, about your situation. Uh, he knows already, but tell yourself, this situation will not uh, move me. And then uh, it is only God who can solve our problems. That is a very important point to make right there. God is the only one who can sort out your problem. And I'm going to pray today that God is going to solve your problem. I'm going to pray today that God is going to answer your problem. Listen to this here, Psalms 94 verse 19. God God wants to heal you from anxiety, from panic attacks. Psalms 194 verse 19 says, When anxiety was great within me, your, console, your consolation brought joy to me. What consolation? God's promises can bring consolation into your life. When you understand the Bible says uh, he can never leave you nor forsake you. That is a great consolation that can override uh, any anxious moments in our lives. Here is what uh, anxiety can do to you. You need to understand how evil anxiety can be. Proverbs uh, chapter 12 verse 25 says uh, an anxious heart where is a man an anxious heart weighs a man down but a kind word cheers him up what kind word the word of the living God the word that God will provide for you the word that God knows your problems right now the word the word that God understands what you're going through and he wants to heal you and to bring deliverance to you hallelujah first Corinthians chapter 7 verse 32 says this I want you to be to be free from anxieties. In, Cor in 1 Corinthians here, we see Paul saying, I want you to be free from anxiety. This is a great desire that you should have to be free of anxiety. I'm not saying you don't, uh, you are not concerned about what you should eat or what your family should eat, but put it to God in prayer. You seek God, you stand with God and God will stand with you. And then lastly here, 1 Peter chapter 5 verse 7 says this, here. Casting all your anxiety, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Or give God your burden because God cares for you. He cares for you. God cares about your problem. God cares about what you're going through. God cares about you. And last verse I want to read with you before we pray right now is Psalms 34 verse 17. It says that when the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of their troubles. When the righteous cries for help, the Lord hears and it delivers them he delivers them from their trouble. Listen, our cry is to God. Do not be anxious for nothing, but pray to God to deliver you. And I want to pray, standing on Psalms 34 verse 17 for you, that when the righteous cry for help, are you righteous? Standing in the righteousness of Jesus Christ, when you cry to God, God hears your cry and He brings deliverance to you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I 
I declare right now upon that family that is going through hardship right now, I declare in Jesus' name provision. We come against the spirit of anxiety and we command every spirit of worries out in Jesus' name. For Jesus, you are the provider. Jesus, you are a provider for this family, for that family right now that is watching right now in Jesus' name. Father, I declare also over that brother and sister that is believing you, Father, believing you for a miracle, believing you for change of their situation, for change over their circumstances right now. I declare by the authority of the name of the living God that they are free in Jesus' name and that you have provided for them by divine power in the mighty name of Jesus. Everybody suffering from high blood pressure because of anxiety and because cause of worries, Lord, we declare healing upon them in Jesus' name. You foul spirit of anxiety. You have no authority over God's people. I dismantle you by the power of the blood of Jesus. And today we release God's people in Jesus' name, in the joy of the salvation. Thank you, Father, for encouraging each and every brother and sister that is watching today, that you are healing them right now. You are restoring their lives right now. You are providing for them right now. Financially, I declare in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father, that God, you are never too late, oh God. And thank you for providing for that family right now. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen and amen. Uh, join me again next week here. And I want to encourage you as well. Go to our YouTube channel. There are many teachings that will bless your soul. Go to our YouTube channel. Like our page. If you love the teaching of the word of God, stand with us as we reach the nations. Go subscribe to our YouTube channel. And also send the word out to other people that here uh, we are praying and standing with you and with God's people to see God move in their lives. God bless you. Join me again next